So we are going to do a painting that is uh, taken from this picture. I'm not sure who the painter is. I can't quite make up uh, the signature. Anyway, uh, it is all about uh, how I mix the paint on the palette to get my uh, mixes in an organized way. So this will be the main focus, how I mix my paints in a paddle uh, and uh, get it organized uh, to have a painting who's quite harmonious. The colors I'm using is titanium white, Naples yellow, yellow light uh, or lemon, um, cadmium uh, lemon. Uh, I use uh, uh, red, which is a uh, medium red, cadmium. Uh, it, uh, this one uh, looks quite like a vermilion. Uh, so after that, I'm using an alizarin crimson, a cobalt blue, a um, ultramarine blue, Onto the side, I've got red oxide and a grey that I have mixed with uh, all three primaries, blue, yellow and red. I'm going to uh, pull up that um, white, so I've got a little bit uh, more space to mix the paint. This palette is a little on the narrow side. Uh, I used to work with something uh, four times this size, but for the sake of the video, I cannot put this on here. So we will uh, make it work uh, with that palette. So it, I'm lifting out uh, that white. There will be some um, moments I will fast forward, so it's not getting too boring for you uh, because really this video is about uh, the mixing of the colors so this will be our focus I'm using rosemary brushes and flat and uh, uh, filberts I already uh, did the drawing as you can see uh, I can send you a um, PDF of, of the drawing if you want to and uh, I can also send you a PDF of uh, that painting. So mixing with ultramarine blue a bit of my um, uh, crimson and uh, in there I'm also going to put A touch of oxide red, a little bit of medium. So I've got a green for oil as a medium, which is a non toxic medium from Senli. Uh, it acts just like uh, turpentine, uh, it takes just a little longer to dry or to evaporate but it is a very good medium and there is no smells to it or if there is it is very little and now I'm going to do all my darks throughout the painting and for that we are going to fast forward
So once we blocked in all the darkest darks, right next to it, I will make a green dark. So my uh, the dark of my shadow uh, with uh, Naples yellow, a, a bit of the cad yellow light and some red. So I want something a little green so I'll add a, a little bit more blue. Uh, also for uh, to keep it dark, blue and red. As you can see on the pictures, uh, the tone of the um, paint is quite reddish orange so mixing the color and uh, we'll apply the darks the darks of the trees So on the top of my darkest darks, uh, I will put the shadow color everywhere against and mixed in in the darkest darks a little bit. I will put all these uh, darkest colors. In the painting, the the shadow is quite dark so this could be seen as um, um, a color who turns the form I haven't mixed enough so I'll have to redo uh, my um, mixes to find the color again so that's a lesson to be learned always uh, mix a big pile of your uh, color and that would um, well save you some trouble and avoid to have to um, mix it all again just like I'm doing now But so I was saying that could be seen as an intermediate color uh, where uh, the light meets the shadow and um, right to this edge we are going to put the light afterwards. So carry on putting the color everywhere it should be, everywhere on top of those darkest darks. Mixing a little darker hue uh, there to get the uh, furthest clumps of um, foliage. Carry on with the mid tone everywhere on top of all those darks. So now we are going to mix uh, the, the lights 
For that, I took a little bit of the grey, who's a value of five, adding a little blue and then lighten it with the cadmium yellow. Add a bit of the complementary, which is uh, red. I'm going to mix uh, two uh, different hues about um, for, with this color. One a little greener and one a bit redder. Just to have a little interest in uh, um, the foliage. You could just all block it in, in the same color and then come back and uh, get some uh, uh, different tones here and there, keeping the same value. There we can see that the value is not light enough, so I'll uh, add uh, uh, some more cadmium yellow to lighten it a little bit. A little uh, Naples as well. I keep my white uh, really for the end if I need really to lighten it so my lightest light is always uh, goes always on uh, last now this is much better I get a little darker as I go uh, further down to that clump of foliage. It is a mushroom shaped, so um, it's a bit equivalent to um, paint a mushroom, really. Uh, all uh, you do to round the form is uh, change. Uh, uh, the value as you go down and uh, here put a bit of a lighter uh, tone as well to get that um, impression that it comes forward We can um, straight away see there how this form is going into shadow. So it turns the form a little bit. And uh, what we are going to have to do in a bit is to, I'm doing it now, is to soften those edges to really give it that turn. We can leave a couple of hard edges, uh, but soften the most of them just underneath. So you get a nice turn and it looks like a clump of uh, branches. This next portion has to be a slightly lighter, so half a tone may be lighter. 
so we get the impression also there is a solid line uh, which gives us the impression of a different clump also um, gives us uh, the impression of uh, coming more forward than the one above so it's in front of the tree adding a little more reds in there so you can see that just below uh, we are lighter than the top and then I will darken going down this clump of um, foliage uh, as we lose a bit of light and um, it will just nicely uh, turn the form again Going back to a few darks, so I'll remix my darks on the side there. You can see so far we've got the darks to start with, then the dark shadows, uh, and then the light of the tree to the right. So with the darks, I'm just adding a few uh, more darks because I had lost a little definition. So wherever I see that I missed some darks as well, I'm adding them now before we carry on with the rest of the painting. You can also notice I've got four brushes into my hand, uh, two for the darkest um, colors and two for the lightest. So I don't contaminate one and the other. It's not as bad as long as there is no white in. Once you put white in a brush, it can't go near dark anymore. So we're doing a little speed painting there. I'm very fast with my painting. <laughs> Adding some dark, see? Now I've got the brushes ready in my hand. One has got the dark, the other one has got the light. One has got a medium tone, so I can go just back and forth here in that same pile of the darks I'm remixing a little uh, color uh, and I'm ready to go see how easy it is to mix this way and uh, those uh, colors will have a very nice harmony together if you uh, mix this way So this is usually how I would uh, go about uh, in, um, in plein air, uh, but also, in a, of course, in a bigger scale. And uh, what I would do uh, back at the studio, I would mix big piles with uh, painting knives and uh, prepare all my colors uh, pre-mixed. And I would put them one next to another, but in a similar way, uh, to this so here you notice I go darker a little redder now we're going even further down the tree and uh, it's a bit inwards so we don't want anything too bright so it stays back a little bit So usually I end up covering quite a few of my darkest darks. So at the nearer the end of the painting, I will have to come back to it to re-emphasize some darks. And that is something that happens naturally. That's why I put them in straight away. 
um, and it is a good habit to get your darks in first as the darks really set up your painting with the composition Now we are going to start to that uh, side, uh, small trees uh, or shrubs, whatever they are. Uh, for that I'm going to add a little bit of white. I want something a bit more pastel um, because I don't want any emphasis on that. Uh, I want it to stay a bit neutral, greyer, uh, so I'm not... Um, I'm not putting as much uh, color on the, this side of the painting. On top of it, it's going out the painting, so I really don't want any attention going to it. Now I'm going to add a few vibrant blues uh, uh, down down below. Uh, color who's going to be a little more shadowy, cool. I could have put a bit more emphasis on that color all, uh, all around the, the darks, uh, like uh, in the color, but I didn't want to do that. I think the notes I put there are just sufficient. Here I'm adding um, what is the background um, foliage of the tree all along that trunk and in the back adding a bit more blue and changing to a little purple and purple still at some places. Now it's time to do uh, the background. I will do the right side um, off camera because um, the time is really marching on and um, the, the focus of this video is the mixing of the color on the palette, not the painting. <laughs> so I don't want to confuse you too much with uh, everything going on there. Here I'm cleaning a little space to start on the sky. Uh, we are going to mix the sky and like to have a clean spot for that. And the, star, the sky is going next to my light uh, uh, of the trees uh, so I know that my value needs to be lighter uh, and uh, it's uh, going to be easy for me to uh, find it with uh, titanium white and uh, 
uh, cobalt blue I will add a little um, ultramarine as well I want a greenish sky so cobalt blue has got some green but I will add a little Naples yellow to green it even further I want a greenish tint to it and now we scrub it in I only paint the area where uh, I can see some sky Now next to that sky here I'm going to block in the, not blocking, get the paint ready for the hill. Uh, that's a perfect space for it as uh, it needs to be darker than the sky and uh, darker than the, um, the plain ground but not um, much darker than the highlight of the tree so this will be the perfect space to have a, a similar um, similar value to it although we can go lighter uh, than the highlights of the tree and you set this up before painting of course uh, your values so you know if you or what you want to say uh, with your values so here I want to be darker than the sky and roughly the same uh, value than the highlights of my trees so to me that is just a little uh, more harmony going on so that's what I'm going to do now. I am going a little darker, tiny bit darker, and if not darker, I'm changing the hue a little bit, but it is slightly darker for the bottom of my tree. And I repeat uh, that uh, color in the front a little bit. So now I'm mixing the, um, the, the ground, which has to be lighter, Uh, but not as light as the sky so putting it here I know if it's lighter than my mountain it will be uh, darker than my sky uh, it doesn't always make sense what I say there but uh, trust me uh, you could mix the um, that uh, foreground I mean the the plane next to the sky uh, color so you you make sure it is um, a touch uh, darker sometimes the same value is fine as the sky for the plane uh, because if I can remind you um, that our darkest in what's darkest in the in a painting if there is trees or buildings it will be the buildings and the trees so everything who's uh, vertical uh, the sky will be the lightest and the plane reflecting the sky will be the second lightest and then the mountains which are slanted they will get a bit less light so they will they will be a little a little darker As I progress on that plane, uh, I'm uh, changing uh, colors slightly. Uh, 
separating the light and the darks and in a little bit the shadows as well so I am um, adapting my colors as I go some dark is dark again A bit darker there's a bit of shadow at the foreground I'll put a few more uh, shrubberies in and in front of the tree a bit bluer So now this is in, we can carry on with the sky uh, and uh, in this case we are going to add the clouds. They have a big part in, in that uh, landscape. So I've added some yellow, yellow um, Naples yellow and um, um, my cadmium yellow. This is the moment when you can cut in the tree as well when you need to. Uh, and uh, where you can also prepare the sky holes. So um, clouds are rarely uh, pure white, actually I would say never in a painting. <coughs> always warm it up a little bit it gives it more life here I darkened a little bit with some uh, red oxide uh, for the sky holes as there is less light passing through the clumps of uh, foliage there will be uh, uh, the, the value will be darker there adding a few smaller uh, holes uh, make sure it stays uh, at a border or in the shadow side. You rarely have sky holes uh, at the lightest part of the tree. Also, don't overdo it. I talk about this all the time. It is tempting because one or two look nice, so we want to put 10, 15 in and uh, all of a sudden we lose the form of our tree and our tree doesn't look uh, solid anymore and uh, so that's that's uh, that's a big trap so be very careful with that adding a few more purplish um, a color around the background foliage uh, so that's the foliage who's, who's in the back of the tree the darkest darks that we see on the tree so I put it all around here to give it some interest Now we're putting the, the trunks and the branches. Be careful not to be too dark, or at least uh, if you dark 
uh, don't be dark from the top to the bottom there will be a change of temperature as you move up or down get one side of your trunk a little more solid than the other and don't forget the light side There I'm uh, adding the light side, which is uh, nearly uh, the pure um, maple yellow with maybe a little white or uh, yellow cadmium at times. So to the right side and not everywhere, you will add a bit of the that color so here I've gone ahead and uh, made uh, the right side uh, as uh, that video would have been far too long um, the main uh, features are in uh, so you uh, it gives you a, a great idea on um, how I go about mixing uh, the colors there is a certain order uh, as we said um, so now all I do is I use those piles and change uh, just a hue a little bit without touching uh, the the value uh, and add some shrubs here and there some um, twigs um, just to make it a little more interesting uh, I will fast forward uh, the rest of the video for you here and um, so because there is not much more uh, to see in uh, a matter of uh, mixing the colors Here I mix the lighter pile, uh, still orangey and uh, one side a bit more yellow, to uh, put a few highlights. So I'm breaking up the color, the big shapes. By breaking up the big shapes, it gives us the illusion of a, a few details. I 
at some places we add a little color as well in the dogs get a few different again a few different notes as you can see now we we have an illusion of a, a, a little bit more um, a form and different things going on in the tree but notice how everything fits together uh, and that is because we uh, use this method adding a few fading trunks branches adding a few lights on this side have to be careful not to overdo it so again we don't watch too much emphasis on that right side just enough here I'm adding a few more darks uh, as I said earlier on often once we put the lights and the highlights and everything uh, on top of everything um, we really eat into those darkest darks so we have to um, get them back in to have a, a little uh, more depth into the painting and that's what's happening uh, at this moment of course now we've got uh, the intermediate tone next to it that we are going to uh, add here and there in the painting a few dogs here and there so I'm going back and forth with uh, those um, uh, values adding a few light as light now as well and uh, well this is uh, the end of uh, our demonstration I hope this was helpful I wish you a happy painting and uh, I'll see you next time for another tutorial